Hi guys, my name is Chica and welcome to my channel. Today we're here in my lovely kitchen and summer is coming. This red Thai curry is definitely on top of my list. The reason I like it is because it's spicy and creamy and it's so easy to pair with any type of rice, bread or noodle of your choice. Well, I'm pescatarian now so I'll be using a bunch of fresh vegetables and some shrimps as protein to make this dish. So feel free to opt it for chicken, beef or fish if you like. Let's get started. As you can see on the screen, I'm using mostly vegetables in this recipe and actually forgot to take out the shrimps from my fridge, but they are required for this red curry. The basils have been in the fridge for a couple of days, so they look very sad. First off, we want to remove the stems of the bell peppers by cutting around it. You would then have an opening on the top so you can scoop the seeds out or shake them out. Next, grab yourself a pastry brush. I'm using a silicone pastry brush here. It's waterproof and super easy to clean. And we want to oil those bad boys up. We want to get them properly lubricated before toasting in the oven. I think the smoky flavor really adds to the curry and bell peppers are 10 times more flavorful after being roasted. I don't have a stove, but if you do, you can also roast it on direct fire and it's better in my opinion because you can get more smoky flavor from the flames. Peel the skin off your carrot and potato. I used one entire carrot and one and a half potatoes here. I also put a recipe with the measurement in the description so you can check that out later. Where you can also follow my social media, Winky Face. There isn't a strict rule of how you should chop your vegetables, but I'm chopping mine into bite sizes just because it's easier to cook them down later. So as long as they're about the same size, it's all good. minutes up and I'm here to check out my bell peppers don't worry about the burnt top as we're gonna get rid of that by removing the skin later just try to flip it around so that he can get distributed evenly I'm gonna give it another 15 minutes so it can get all soft and mushy Finally, we're going to chop up some shallots into little cubes. Pan fry it until slightly brown. Then you want to toss in the carrots, saute them for a few minutes so they get caramelized. Pour the coconut milk into the pot. Bring it to simmer. Then it's time to add your red curry paste. Keep the heat on low and stir it continuously until all the paste melts away. Add all of the chopped veggies into the pot and stir to combine. Cover the pot with a lid and wait until it comes to a simmer again. Now that our bell peppers are fully roasted, we are going to remove the charred skins. The skins should come off easily and it's so strangely satisfying to do that. Once the skins are removed, we will cut the peppers into small cubes. Add some leftover whole wheat bread, so I'm dipping them to the tray I roasted bell peppers in to absorb the dew. I'm dribbling some extra olive oil onto the bread to make them extra crunchy. Now back to our curry. Add these roasted bell peppers and some deep fried bean curd. 
give everything a good stir. Now it's time to add our shrimps. You want to add them very last because they cook so fast. And finally, a good stir again. Add about 100 ml water. Constantly stirring is the key because the curry is creamy. Things will start to weigh down and stick to the bottom if you don't stir it frequently enough. Keep the heat on low and put the lid back on. I'm storing all the extra bell peppers in an airtight container. They're great to add to your pasta or just eat them with some baguette. Depends on the consistency. If your curry is too watery, let it boil longer, or add some more water if it's too sticky. Serve it in a deep dish and make sure you get a little bit of everything. Add some fresh basil as garnish to make it look pretty, and as always, Enjoy! I totally stole that line from Chef John, like, totally.